done some form of informational notification in the paper or something explaining what that was? From what I gather, they were too busy doing the whole vote no <laughs> campaigning. Yeah, I think they were so focused on trying to get the new community center and library going that it slipped through the cracks, I guess. Maybe, yeah. So even like the library director didn't know that that's what that pertained to? She had offered to help write it up and she didn't know that they already had it a done deal until it was all done. So. Oh God. Okay, it's 1.30. Um, do we wait for Jennifer before we start, I suppose, right? Well, yeah. I think we should. I talked to her earlier today, so I, I know she's coming. Dave, how are things over at Wayne State? Oh, we're hanging in there. Um, we've got, let's see, two weeks of classes plus finals. And then we are done for fall semester. So it's kind of a weird year, but that's true everywhere. Do we made it longer than I thought we would. Somewhere for a couple months. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, we're we're doing this tiny little December term uh, after Thanksgiving, but enrollment is very, very, very small. Basically, just students who want to take a class so they can graduate in December um and just need one more to finish off i think that's and i think there might be a few athletes sticking around and taking a class too just to stay eligible um but it's might be a hundred students on campus the way it sounds tammy should i call jennifer and see what's going on um yeah if you would like it's only 132 it's not huge late but it's not like her to be late either no it isn't well i think maybe i will give her a call because we'll need to determine who's going to take um take notes today too since there's not a secretary right now <laughs> chris does that mean not it <laughs> You're forgetting them in the junior high world. That is not it. Oh, you do the, yeah. <laughs> I love that. There was just a miscommunication in her mind as far as the time. So she, she's getting right on. So she'll be with us in a minute or two. Oh, good. And it may be a bad time of day for Gretchen to be able to join us, huh? How's life in your neck of the woods, Bob? Um, <clears throat> no, well, we just got the announcement about half an hour ago that our high school is going remote on Monday. So oh. uh, elementary and middle school are staying in buildings, but high school is going remote. And so we'll see what happens. We, 
with contract tracing and ever contact tracing and everything um, we'll be about 50 percent but the kids will be gone on monday so that's why and we're almost out of subs and yep we've held on pretty long though so we haven't had to do anything since the beginning of the school year so that's good um, but yeah so we're tightening down all of our restrictions now and all that so yep that's where we're at so fun times here well that's devastating and very emotional isn't it yeah and it's been tough on the high school teachers because it's you know we haven't been we didn't know what the threshold was so it was more of a you know is it coming is it coming I mean we all knew it was coming but we didn't know when so and I'm on the remote learning team so you know we've had plans in place and it's been it's just been kind of tough because we're we we knew it was inevitable you know within the last couple of weeks but just you know last minute knowing just kind of like last spring we just all of a sudden it happened at least we have the weekend to to kind of prepare for it so that's nice that or you could go on a three day drunk you know <laughs> right <laughs> Sometimes during these times, that's what a person feels like maybe you need. Yeah, yeah. And my wife is the elementary like or the elementary principal. So her last two weekends have all been spent 90% of the time on the phone with public health, trying to do all of that stuff. And so it's just been, it's been nuts. It's, it's like all of a sudden we were fine. And then it was just, you know, everything just sort of hit the fan all at once. Are you in Cedar County? Is that right? Yeah, we're in Cedar County. All right. So sorry, you guys. I misread an email and put down three o'clock. So, so sorry. Are you guys ready to get ready or get started or where were you? We were waiting for you. Okay. All good. We were just visiting. <laughs> You're the fearless leader, so go for it. Fearless leader. I don't know. Okay. Again, I apologize. Um, let's go ahead and get this meeting call to order. According to my computer, it says it is 1.38 p.m. No. And we do need someone to take the, the um, secretary role. Who wants to do that? Everybody's muted. <laughs> I'll just say that is not in my skill set. Are, are we going to rec are we recording this? It is recording, is that, and I should have asked if that's okay first. Yeah, that's good for me. That's good. Okay. It'll be unlisted on the YouTube channel, so it's not like it's out there for everybody to view. Okay. Um, Tammy, do you just want to do roll call? Sure. Well, everyone is, a, in, is present except for Gretchen. So, okay. And of course, Tina Walker, in case someone didn't know that she had resigned, so she's no longer able to be on the board right now. Okay, so um, I guess I can just take some notes, but if it's being recorded, between Tammy and I, maybe we'll get the minutes um, taken and to everyone. So I need someone to make a motion to approve the agenda. I'll so move. I'll second. So we had a first and um, a motion by Karen and seconded by Rosa. All in favor of that, um, say aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Awesome. And second, next up, does anyone want to make an approval or make a motion to approve the minutes from the last board meeting? Has everyone had a chance to take a look at those? That was from August 7th, seems like forever ago. 
and it was also online. So, Chris, I move to accept the minutes. Okay, okay so we have a motion from uh, motion from Chris, seconded by Karen. All in favor? Um, aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. Motion carried. No. Next up, we have the Nebraska Library Commission's report from Krista. Hello, everybody. Can you Hi. hear me? Hello. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. All right. Um, so I sent my report and I sent it again this morning because I had forgotten something. Um, not going to read all of it as usual. Um, our offices are still open only by appointment only uh, with uh, appropriate safety measures in place. All the details are there, same as it has been since July. Um, we have our resources on our website. Just to remind everybody to look there if you want some things that might help you and you're figuring out what to do as you're opening, closing, reclosing, <laughs> uh, whatever your situation may be. And um, we're trying to keep a list of what's going on in our library. So send something to our reference desk if you want to tell them if you are you know, having changes to what's happening in your libraries. Uh, budget is next thing up. We don't have a lot of um, news about national or federal budget. Uh, the Library Commission's budget request, we submitted it on um, in September asking for an increase to our regional library systems. Um, and we that has not heard anything yet about if that's, they haven't decided on that yet for the state. And uh, Congress just extended, uh, continued continuing resolution to extend everything through December so that we didn't have to shut things down. Well, on October, in October beginning of October, um, what originally was said after the elections, uh, Congress would figure out appropriations. I don't know what after the elections means timing wise now. Um, so we're just waiting to see if what our federal budget will be. And there's a couple of different proposals that do include funding that might be extra additional funding to us, the Library Commission to help us do things. So um, it's just a waiting game for both of those things. Um, our Innovation Studios has been able to get started up again. They, um, you know, slowly, they have done installations in Superior, St. Paul, and Cambridge. Those are the next ones that we're due to be installed. So they have the equipment from all the makerspace equipment. Um, we're doing a limited training, just a few people going and, you know, with all as the safety as, as we can. Lots more videos too as well, My, many more videos being made of all the different um, equipment trainings. Um, we also requested from IMLS when we approved to change the uh, ending numbers of the project. Originally, we were going to have, I think, 39 libraries in, in um, by the end, which would be actually next summer, summer um, June 2021. We didn't want to extend, we had to stop doing anything for quite a few months because of the pandemic. So we didn't want to extend it any longer time-wise. <laughs> so um, we asked if we could cut back how many libraries would be included in the grant. Um, and the projects were gonna be down to 34 to th or 35 libraries and um, doing a lot, <clears throat> a lot more videos being created to help with the training. And we also use some of the grant funds to purchase Niche Academy, which is similar to Moodle, where you can host classes and courses and videos and training um, things on there. So um, what we were able to use this grant money to purchase an account for, uh, for that, a year long subscription to that, um, that can be used for this grant, uh, for the Innovation Studios trainings and anything else we wanna use it for as well. So Holly Doug and our CE person is uh, taking, is working with that. And hopefully it'll be something we'll continue after the Innovation Studios is over. Uh, we did, uh, are in the midst of distributing the funding for the CARES Act grants that we were awarded. We were given money from via the IMLS of some of the CARES Act funding. We did uh, 64 libraries plus the Reader Zone um, Central Plains Library System had put that together for everybody. Um, that we actually awarded them enough money to make it a year long subscription. So that's gonna be around till next August for people to use for anything. And the list is up on our website. We've got paperwork coming back and forth. I'm working a lot on that with getting funding out to libraries and getting people their invoices and things to me. There might be more funding coming. Like I said, everything's kind of on hold right now. Uh, we are giving out grants from the commission. Our Youth Grants for Excellence, uh, they were due October 7th and Sally is actually meeting I think next Tuesday with a team at the commission to make determinations on those grants. 
Um, as usual, she received way more than we have a budget for, so we'll be picking and choosing from that. Uh, internship grants are due next Tuesday, so if you are interested in having an intern at your um, public library, you can get your grant in by the end, by midnight next Tuesday. You could potentially get an internship grant. And then we're doing CE grants again. Those are due in December, and this is just open for anything. This per, this most rec this year, we did them specifically just for attending the ARSL, um, and then expanded it to also if people want to attend the um, virtual Iowa Library Association conference. But for next year, we're back to whatever you want to do, attending an event, whether it's in person or virtual, uh, taking an online course, training, workshops, and anything else you want to do CE related. Um, we only have one uh, big change in staff here at the commission. Cynthia Nye, she retired last in September, effective at the end of September. She had worked in the Library Innovation Studios project to start with. That's how she first came to the Library Commission, working with Joanne McManus on that. And then just last year, switched into our computer team, um, switched off of that grant project into our team to be an extra staff person for them to help um, increase libraries broadband, working with libraries on submitting um, E-rate applications with me to get that done, um, but decided it was finally time for her just to retire entirely. Um, I do not think there's any plans to replace her position. Any of the things she was doing with the broadband related um, libraries, uh, Holly Wolt is taking on. Uh, E-rate training is happening and coming soon. Uh, USAC is doing its E-rate training this week, actually. I was just on a workshop right before this, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week. So um, I've been attending those workshops. They're all gonna be recorded for people to access later. Um, so now that those are done, I've scheduled my workshops. I usually do one per uh, library system and go around the state, one in person each system and then an online one. Um, do for safety purposes. I will not be traveling around the state, uh, but I am going to do multiple workshops on multiple days and at varying times so that hopefully everyone has a chance to find something that is convenient for them to attend a live one. So I've got the dates there over the next couple, um, few weeks here in November. Um, some in the morning, some in the afternoon, and then um, we'll have a recorded one afterwards as well for anybody who couldn't attend any of the in-person ones. We also have a special deal with Special Construction State Matching Grant Program. This is something through uh, E-Rate as well. Um, E-Rate, when they made the modernization, did the modernization of the program in 2016, they created that this special project, the special program where if a state could come up with money to match um, E-Rate funding, then libraries could get even more of a discount if they want, if 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 they needed to have uh, construction done uh, to bring fiber to their libraries. So this would be for new fiber installations to a library. So if they don't have fiber yet and they need something, um, construction done, a trunch dug, okay, wiring, whatever needs to be done to bring it to the building. Um, we've been uh, working for a few years with a rural broadband task force that uh, the governor had put together just to investigate everything broadband related in Nebraska. And out of that, uh, the Public Service Commission has um, put up a million dollars over the next four years to help libraries, help schools and libraries get this last, the last mile connection done. Um, libraries can, we can apply right now for E-rate and then apply for the Public Service Commission money. And then um, hopefully we can get some more uh, fiber, strong fiber connections to libraries. And I know we have three or four libraries who've already started the process. Yeah, I think that's what we so, but that's available now too for some more funding if anybody does need that last connection. Uh, Big Talk from Small Libraries is happening again next year. I just opened up the call for speakers uh, the end of October. So um, if you know of anybody or if you want to present on Big Talk, that would be great. This is uh, all of our presenters. We try, I try to keep them at um, either uh, public school academic with um, a population served or FTE of 10,000 or less, which is pretty much almost everybody in Nebraska. <laughs> um, but this is a national conference that people from all over the country end up speaking and attending it. So um, go to the website. Uh, we've got until the beginning of January, January 8th, to submit any proposal ideas. And then I've just given you the schedule for the upcoming Encompass Live shows. Uh, reminder, next week's is on Tuesday, not Wednesday, because Wednesday is Veterans Day. And as a federal holiday, it's a state holiday for me, for Library Commission as a state agency, so we're closed. So I have a day off in the middle of the week next week. Okay. Um, so we bumped Encompass Live to Tuesday, but then everything else is back to the usual Wednesday. 
And then basic skills classes, there's a schedule of those. Uh, there were some courses that were postponed due to the pandemic and Holly did get those rescheduled. Uh, technology happened in October and then finance and intellectual freedom. They've got new dates in November and December in between other um, classes. And uh, the one, yeah, and those two are actually, you know, normally these courses are two weeks long. She did those for three weeks because they fall um, just because of where to fit them in because they fall over the two, the holidays, Thanksgiving and, and Christmas. So give people more time to get through all of the work. And that's what's happening from the commission. Any questions? Sounds like you're very, very busy. Uh, we are trying, yeah. <laughs> um, most staff are still actually like here, I'm at my house, um, mostly working from home. About 60% or so of our staff are working from home entirely or most of the time. Um, and when you go into the office, there's, I could be there for a whole morning and never see another soul. <laughs> there's people there, I know, but yeah, keeping things going. Well, we appreciate you keeping things going. We need the commission. <laughs> We're not going anywhere. <laughs> Good. Uh, okay, well, if there are no questions for Krista, thank you so much, Krista, for all your hard work and hanging in there during this crazy, crazy. Weird times, yeah. <laughs> okay, well, let's go ahead and move on then to the financial report. First up is a quarterly year-to-date expense report. Tammy, anything there that you need to call our attention to? I didn't think there was anything um, out of the ordinary. In fact, of course, like travel is very minimal. Um, I did get the oil changed in the car and that's, otherwise there were just a little bit of gas here and there. Um, Let's see, I bought a few book kits to have on hand and Chelsea's been promoting those. And yeah, otherwise it's very bare bones. Did everybody get a chance to look, to review it? It was, it was there on the Google Drive link. Mm -hmm. Well, if the most exciting thing is getting the oil changed, I guess that's just the way it is. <laughs> right. And I do appreciate um, your purchases of the book kits. Thank you. That was, um, I know I had made that request at one point. I don't know about others, so. Okay. Yeah, it's fun to have them available and send them off when they are needed. Yeah. Yeah, because a lot of libraries can't buy multiple copies, so that's always a great thing to have um, available to those who are doing book discussion groups or whatever. So thank you. Any other questions on the expense report? Okay. Um, if not, we do need to go into executive session. I know we had had discussion just via email um, when Tammy's review, six month review came up and we could not find anything in the minutes that actually discussed an actual um, mon you know, monetary increment of, for a raise. So at this time, Tammy, we need to say, see ya so okay. that we can so we can discuss this. Should I put you guys all in breakout? Is that the best way to do this probably? I would imagine, sure. Okay. Let's see. I need to do it manually. <laughs> Hmm. I think you got it. I think so. Okay. 
it's always an eerie feeling having everyone just leave and knowing they're talking about you. Gretchen, I don't know if you're able to join the breakout. She must have. <laughs>
Okay. Now this really looks like Hollywood Squares. Yeah. <laughs> and Bob's missing. Oh, oh, you know, he had, he had Wait. left. He, he put up that yeah, boy's face. So yeah. I think he, he got interrupted. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully he'll okay. get back to us. He'll get back. Okay, so we are to the tra uh, Three Rivers Library Systems Report, Director's Report. So there's Bob. Oh, and there he's back. Okay, um, well, I sent a copy of everything or I put it in the drive, but I've had limited travel, of course. Each month I was going to Omaha to sign checks. I think it was September, Chelsea put them all in an envelope and sent them and I signed them and sent them from here rather than making the trek. It's one thing if I'm stopping and visiting libraries along the way, it's another to just go there, sign the checks, check on things and go through files. And it's a long way to drive for just that sometimes. Um, I did go on August 10th and met with the accountant Gary Riggs when he did the audit or the overview consolidation I think is what he calls it and then I picked up a book set and delivered it to Stanton so I did visit there they are still closed to the public um, adult appointments only and I attended a county meeting at Tilden in September which was very nice I have visited St. Edward, Cedar Rapids, and Genoa because they all have pretty new libraries and are all within half an hour. So I have gone to, there to help them with different things. And Ponco is looking for encyclopedias. They wanted like seven sets because they are going to try to make furniture on wheels rather than having any fabric type of furniture anymore. So it'll be interesting to see how that turns out. So I stopped and picked up encyclopedias from Lee and Beamer and Winside and then actually delivered them to Ponca. So I did visit a few libraries. Okay, I maybe slap me silly and call me stupid, but how are they doing that with sets of encyclopedias? I just wanna know what the process here. They showed me a, a Pinterest Thing. Apparently they use some, some glue and fasten them together and just make chairs and put them on wheels and it'll be interesting. I might have to uh, go see those or ask them to send a picture. Yeah, they said they would share pictures when they're done, but I bet it's a pretty big project. Uh, the director's meeting with the Nebraska Library Commission was virtually in August, and it'll be virtual next week on the 12th. I have Zoom meetings every week for public library directors and staff, whoever comes, and they are recorded and they're put unlisted on the YouTube channel, but I send the link out with an overview with all kinds of links about everything that we talked about. And sometimes I get really discouraged and wonder, does anybody even read them or look at them? And then other times, like last, the one this week, I had like three different people email me after and, hey, can I contact that person to find out more about what they were talking about for digitizing records or for ancestry.com? So it's kind of exciting when you, you can build those connections to keep people going. Let's see. And I talk to librarians on the phone all the time and send out lots of emails. I got a Facebook group for the Three Rivers Library for public librarians. And I do weekly did you know features to try to highlight things like picture book November or the, the talking book in Braille, just whatever can think of. And then I, um, and it's also a group that everybody can chat amongst themselves or put something out there to highlight what's going on in their libraries. And then I started a Trails School Librarian group. And so far, all it's really been is to highlight Chelsea's uh, Fresh Book Fridays that she puts for the book, set, uh, book sets, but hopefully that'll grow into something more. I mean, that just started the end of September. Yeah, and that's what uh, the Golden Sower titles, a lot of the book sets we've been getting lately. And Chelsea puts out a newsletter six times a year, try to put out whatever information we think everybody should know. 
I've been watching a lot of webinars, the Encompass Live, Web Junction, School Library Journal, Library Journal. I mean, there's just so many out there. If there's none live, there's tons archived and recorded. And, and I've attended different Zoom meetings for like ARSL, MPLA, Nebraska School Library Association, NLA. And I attended the ARSL conference and I'm still trying to catch up on some of the virtual recorded ones, attended the ILA conference and youth services retreat. I haven't done anything yet with the system peer coordinator because it just seems like everything is so much on hold that it's hard, hard to get someone going when there's nothing to go forward with. Did do a workshop on October 27th. One of the Zoom meetings, everybody was so doom and gloom. And I asked, well, what do you do to build your spirits up? And I heard, ice cream, chocolate, and potato chips. And it's like, oh boy, we're in trouble. So, um, Miley- I'm I, surprised there wasn't alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there was that too, but. So Miley Bader from the Leadership Center in Aurora, she gave a presentation, it was $100 and she did it virtually, but uh, it's recorded. And then it ended up being a statewide thing because uh, people, Chelsea made out this wonderful flyer, sent it out on the listserv, and the first person that signed up was from Kearney. And then I saw that Cindy from Western put it out for her region, and then Denise e emailed and said, hey, can, I, can my people attend this? So it became a statewide thing, and I okayed it with Miley, and she said, yeah, the more the merrier. So, so that was good. And so I hope everybody got a chance to watch it, or if you're interested, it was I thought it was engaging, motivating. She kind of stated the obvious, you know, about take care of yourself and such, but sometimes just need to hear it. And of course, Bibliostat training is going to be coming up in November. And that too, the systems are working together so that everybody gets a chance to attend whatever session works. And going to do a summer reading workshop on December 1st. And that's going to be the Henry Dorley Zoo, Sally Snyder, Morrill Hall, Nebraska Extension Office, Wildlife Encounters, Lisa Papp, who is an author of like Madeline Finn and the Library Dog, and Nebraska Game and Parks. So seven sessions, half hour each, in a couple 15 minute breaks. So that'll be exciting. Of course, when it's online, you don't have to plan where you're going to have it. You don't have to plan food. You don't have to worry about travel expenses for everyone. So. It's easier, but it's kind of sad. And there's a lot of new directors in the system. Uh, Blair, Ralston, I don't think they've got anyone hired yet. Uh, Greenwood, Fremont, of course, uh, we'll probably be getting someone new. And plus those have been there not that long, like Niobrara, Cedar Rapids, Oakland. So it's gonna be busy, I think, working with accreditation, working with uh, the to, excuse me, statistics report and so on. I think there's going to be a need a lot of it, a lot of assistance. And uh, 2021 accreditation, I think there's 25 libraries that are due and a lot of those are new libraries, librarians. And then there's 15 libraries that have never been accredited or are well overdue. So would like to do something to encourage that. And I really kind of at a loss what to do to help any school librarians right now because it's can't even go into public libraries. So it's really a challenge to get into school libraries, but someday hopefully can build a connection there. And yes, it seems like I'm busy every day. It should have all kinds of stuff to report, but that's, it's been kind of limited trying to do it all virtually. So that's what I have. Good okay. job, Tammy. Yeah, well, thank you, I, Tammy. I in the circumstances, you're, you're doing great. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yeah, I think your um, weekly Zoom meetings, I think that's where I got messed up and, and got my time wrong. So I think I just looked at the wrong email. So. But thank you for doing those and I'm looking forward to the summer reading workshop, of course. Yeah, hopefully our, hopefully our summers um, 
this coming up summer will be look different than this last past summer. So any other questions for Tammy or comments? All righty, so moving on to um, committee reports. Do we have anything on the scholarships? Really not anything. Um, I don't believe we have had applications of any kind in the last three months. Yeah, and like um, Krista mentioned, they you know have scholarships available through the commission. Correct. Um, I think those were, of course, for the rural library systems mm -hmm. and and things. So, okay, and uh, nominations. Um, we need a new board member, and I spoke with Karen earlier this morning on the phone, and so um, she contacted. Uh, Mary Jo Mack from the John A. Stahl Library in West Point, and she um, has agreed to be on the board. So we just, I would like to make that recommendation that we have Mary Jo join our board. Um, I know we'll need a secretary at a later time. So, but for right now, um, would somebody like, or uh, Karen, do you want to make the motion to? Yeah, I make a um, motion accept. that uh, we approve Mary Jo Mack as our new board member. I second. Okay, so we had a motion from Karen, seconded by Gretchen. Everyone in favor of that motion, please say aye. 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 Okay, all opposed, same sign. Okay, motion carried. So we will welcome Mary Jo Mack to our next meeting. Um, I guess at this time, does anyone want to volunteer for the secretary position? <laughs> okay. Um, well, then let's just hold off and wait until we have our next meeting and include Mary Jo in that. And if she would like to do that, otherwise we'll have to have, we'll have to make a nomination for that position. Tina is just such a hard act to follow. I think she does such a great <laughs> job with it. It's kind of intimidating to the rest of us. Yeah. All righty. Well, that's great that Mary Jo agreed to be on our board. I know it's it's always difficult to sometimes find time to do those types of extra things outside of your library. So the one thing that um, Karen did mention was um, she would, Mary Jo would appreciate, of course, the virtual or Zoom type of meetings going forward as she has some concerns with um, some matters, personal matters. So I think this has worked out pretty well um, since we can't all travel, but it's always a nice option to have to be able to join virtually if we're not able to get in the car and get somewhere. So, all righty. So next committee would be continuing education. I don't even remember who's on that committee. All righty, so if there's nothing on that. Um, the next up on the agenda is the trails board report. And that's each of you sharing what's going on in your world. Sure. Okay, who wants to go first? I'll go, because I don't know if we have been hit pretty hard, you know, not necessarily pretty hard, but we've had some staff who have tested positive. And so now I'm not only a librarian, I'm a PE teacher, I'm a music teacher and I am music, but, and PE is not real great either, but at least it's better than music. If they put me in art, then we're really in trouble. Um, but, you know, we have now um, more kids back because uh, we do quarterly if they want to do virtual or on um, 
And so a lot of our virtual kids came back, but now we've kind of had an outbreak in the community. And so people have chosen to go back to virtual and, but we, I want to say on Monday, I haven't done, because I do the check-ins. I don't know if I told you guys that in the mornings we have a procedure and I take the kids temperatures and we had 134 kids face to face on Monday. And that's the most we've had. And we usually have, I think we have 230 or something on our enrollment for elementary. So we're getting there, but this outbreak has definitely set us back and I'm still a mobile librarian. Um, and it was a lot better before the quarter because I was actually able to go into the classroom, not during specials time and actually be a resource and help the teachers and, you know, do Google Docs and Google Slides and all of that kind of stuff and work with them as what they were teaching. But now I'm back to specials, which is, you know, the classroom teacher's not in there, so I don't get to co-teach with them. Um, but, you know, it is what I, you know, I still get to be in there with the kids and still get to, you know, have a little fun and greet them every morning. And so, you know, library might still be one of their favorite specials. So. And that's it. Well, I can go next. Uh, this is Dave. Um, yeah, like I talked about a little bit, just chatting before everybody showed up, we've got about two weeks left in our semester plus finals. Um, it's been an odd year here, like everywhere else. Um, we've had some staff out uh, both in the library and college as a whole and I would say I've totally lost track of how many students have been out for one reason or another and I don't think the institution really has a particularly good handle on how many are really truly out at any given time versus how many of them are choosing voluntarily to be out uh, just because they don't feel like going to class for a couple of days so it's it's been a a weird kind of year, um, but we made it through the semester maybe, which I did not expect us to do. If you'd have asked me on the 1st of August what the odds were, I thought we'd have everybody sent home by October and that did not happen. Um, it's surging here also like it is sort of throughout Northeast Nebraska. Um, you know, the stats I saw on Wednesday were significantly worse than the stats from the previous Wednesday. So I think that's true in the community of Wayne. It's true of Wayne State College. It's true everywhere. My wife's a nurse, so I get information on the side of what's going on as well that I can't really talk about publicly. But we'll just say it's it's a good time for everybody to stay home for the next two or three weeks. Um, and yeah, beyond that, we're our building traffic is down, uh, even though our enrollment is is up and present. We're down about 20% uh, compared to a normal fall semester or maybe even just a little bit more than that. Um, our students are hunkering down a bit more than they normally would. Um, and that, that varies. It's like everybody else in our community. Some people are very careful and some people are very indifferent in our living life just as if nothing was going on. And so it's sort of all over the place. Um, but yeah, I'm, I guess I'm just happy we've made it through till early November and nothing went horribly catastrophically wrong. The problems have been manageable so far. Ask me again in two weeks, I may give you a different answer. Um, but, uh, yeah, we're just trying to get through the year safely as possible and then in three months or six months or 26 months, whenever it's back to normal, we'll start more aggressively trying to do what we normally do. I agree, Dave. I honestly did not think that we would be here after two weeks. I am shocked. I'm really glad because we have put a lot of, you know, precautions in place and, you know, obviously we, we only have, I think, uh, oh goodness gracious. I want to say two kids who are, are positive. There are some who are quarantined, but I, they're not getting it from the school because yeah. it's just. Yeah. If you've, if you've only had two that have been positive, your numbers are far better than ours. Definitely. 
we've had more than, I mean, we just have two right now, but I would guess maybe under five that we've had since the beginning, which is really good. So that's, those are good numbers. Well, I guess I can go next. Um, first, I want to say, Dave, I'm really sorry you're dealing with that at Wayne State College. Um, that's my alma mater, and I've been pretty disappointed with how they've handled the COVID stuff. I've kind of been following on Facebook. Um, so I'm glad I graduated. Um, we reopened to the public June 5th um, with precautions in place. Someone made us some like plexiglass shields for our circulation desk and stuff and um, we've been requiring people to hand sanitize when they come in masks are encouraged um burt county has been pretty okay with covid cases i think it's on the rise you know we're in the red right now on the health department meter but um other than that things are okay i had to get tested for covid in the middle of october which was super painful don't recommend um, yeah, <laughs> Dave knows. Dave had the Q-tip through the brain. Um, it was, yeah, it was a bad time, but I didn't have COVID, so that's good. But I had like a sinus infection and lost my sense of taste and was just, you know, wanted to be safe. But um, other than that, things are okay. Um, not really much else to report. I'll go next since I'm in Burke County too, um, we're, we're so busy in here. It just is almost, I wish it would go back to normal just because it's easier just to have things normal. We haven't really closed our doors at all since um, what, May 13th. So um, we have a, a lot of traffic in here, but I will say we don't see school age kids very much. I don't know if the kids don't think they can come in or if they're just really cautioned, it, which it's fine, but that just increases the amount of phone calls and the lists of books that we have to get together and set outside for people to still pick up. So you're still doing all those different ways of serving your patrons. Both of our book clubs that meet in the library have been active, super, <laughs> I, I just can't quite figure that out, but they have been. Our story time started back up in um first of october and that's been really well except we did not have it this tuesday because the numbers are up and we went into the red so we did not have it um i don't know about next week we i would probably recommend we don't have it again next week too just because i know we have you know in a small town you just hear stuff but i don't know for sure who's positive and who's just staying home we had 16 families who um, stayed home and an organization, a group of moms filled baskets for Halloween and took them around to those houses. I thought that was interesting, different way to handle Halloween, but it made me think, okay, so those families must have a reason. So I'm kind of glad I have not seen them at all here. I just found out my dad probably has it. And so I keep close tabs on him. And fortunately I have not been to his house for two weeks. I talked to him on the phone about four times a day to keep up with how he's doing. Um, he has a lot of health issues, but you know, he wasn't recommended to go to the doctor. I thought that was interesting. They didn't want him in the clinic and hmm. I thought that was just interesting. Unless he gets really bad, they said, you know, just stay home, take care of yourself. They said, there's nothing we can do for you that you aren't doing. Yikes. So, but it is just kind of crazy. Sometimes I think I'm just exhausted because everything is always changing and still we're serving still so much of our community here, which is great, but it's, I'm tired. I want it to go back to normal. Yeah. I will piggyback on that and say the mental exhaustion is mm -hmm. real. I've actually been struggling a little bit with my library board and how things are handled and I think, you know, I think we all have the, the library's interest at heart, but there's been a lot of um, butting, butting of heads and disagreements and we've been trying to do, um, we haven't had an in-person story time since the beginning of March and the board wanted us to start doing a virtual story time. So we've been trying to do that once a week with a webcam and it's just, it's, 
it's do really your important. parents do your story time parents want virtual story time so the board has been telling me that they have heard from other people that they want this virtual story time i personally have never heard a single parent say yeah let's do story time i've had some some very few responses on Facebook and our website to the story time. So I don't know if we're even going to all this effort and no one is even watching. It's so. a lot of effort when you don't have another staff person to film it. By the time you set everything up and do it, I did a couple and they got great, great um, viewings, but it's a right. lot of work to do it. And um, so I said, unless somebody wants to come in and help me film it. No, no, they, so we had a webcam and I'd set it up in my office back there so I can close the door and there's someone private and then me and my children's librarian take turns reading and that was going fine. Well, the board decided that our back room looks junky because it's a back room in a library and they don't want us filming in there anymore. So they want us filming like out in the children's area, but how are you supposed to do that with a desktop computer that you can't move and people coming in and out? And it's just. You just have to do it when you were closed, which is what I had to do. So they can see how complicated it can be. Right. And that's the thing is I appreciate my board, but you know, we're in the trenches every day. I work here 40 hours a week. And then I have people who come in once a month and tell me what needs to be done. And I'm sure you can relate, but um, it's it's very mentally taxing. It's been it's been hard. Yeah. It, this has been a really hard time for everybody. And yeah. hang in there, Megan. Thank you. We appreciate it. <laughs> I call. You know, anytime you need to vent. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, I might need. <laughs> Sorry to go on a little a rant. No, but that's, that's, that's hey. That's, we understand. Then what's going? It's just. I mean, just frustrated to the point of tears. Yeah. Daily. I get it. Yeah. Well, I can go next if, if you're done, Megan. Yes, I am. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. All right. Well, you were talking about testing. I get tested uh, at least every other week, sometimes every week, because my parents are in their 90s and they're needing extra help, and I go back and forth. And mm. So, and our COVID numbers here, I, I understand our local hospital is just packed. It's a scary situation. Um, so with going into the red, uh, we aren't making a whole lot of changes, except um, we are not going to have any library programming in the library at all. We're doing everything via Zoom and, um, all of our book clubs we've been doing on Zoom anyway, except one or two of them had been doing a hybrid where people could come in if they wanted and socially distance, but we're not even going to offer that. It's all going to be Zoom. And those have been going pretty well. And um, my uh, assistant and I have been doing, we've done Facebook Live story times, which what I like about those is people can go back and watch, you know, if they aren't available at the exact time you're doing it, they can still uh, see it. And we got a lot of views. Um, but now we've been doing uh, mostly Zoom story times. And it does, it takes two people because we usually record the books and separately so that the kids can really see the pictures better because if you're just holding them up, it's really difficult. And so we go back and forth with putting up the books. And um, so one of us has to be the techie <laughs> and one of us on camera. And and we it's working out. I've learned a lot on how to do this stuff. Um, we also this week did Golden Sore Book Talks with uh, for the local, um, the third and fourth graders in the local elementary schools. And uh, we recorded those ahead of time. And then we would Zoom with them and we would um, just talk a little bit about Golden Sower and how they can vote and that stuff. And then we would uh, play the, the book talks and 
uh, those went really well. Um, we're still, once a month, we are doing curbside uh, pickup of craft kits. We just uh, did our Halloween one not long ago, a couple weeks ago. It was a spider web kit thing. And then for Halloween, we had a drive up trick or treat and we put together little trick or treat bags. Uh, we have continued ever since um, March with offering, um, we have lockers outside where people can call and request us to check out certain things for them. We put them in a locker and they can come pick them up in the locker. And we also have our drive up window. And um, in the last uh, two months or so, more people were coming into the library. But in the last week, we've had a big resurgence of people requesting items be put in the lockers or be available at the drive up window for them. Our door traffic for the month of October was only 44% of what it was last year. So, um, but as Rosa said, even though maybe there aren't that many coming inside the library, we're still very busy with um, serving them in other ways. Um, we're contemplating, what are we gonna do for summer reading? Um, I think it's, our gut feeling is it's gonna be a rough, rough winter. And, you know, they're saying there's going to be a vaccine possibly by the end of the year, but how soon it's going to be available. And I am old enough that uh, the year of the swine flu thing, I got the swine flu vaccine and, in the first bunch, and then they started having big problems with it, with people developing Guillain-Barre syndrome and so they quit giving it and I'm thinking I'm gonna let everybody else go first I'll wear a mask a bit longer I don't mind <laughs> get the bugs out of it um, plus you know viruses mutate and I don't know I think this is maybe going to become uh, more endemic uh, like the flu and eventually but I don't know it's just that's just it. Yeah, it. It's stressful because we just don't know. We don't know how to plan. We can't really make firm plans. And uh, as librarians, we're a little OCD about stuff like that, you know, because we have to plan stuff so far ahead. And it's just, um, we're all in the same boat, professionally and personally. And just on a personal note, sorry, I lost my partner a month ago. So it's a rough time. That's all I have. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Well, we're here for you. You can always shoot us an email. It doesn't have to be, you know, about library business or anything. We're friends here. So reach out anytime. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Karen. And so sorry um, for your loss and we love you. Yes. Um, I guess I'll go. Um, we've been back open to the public since June 1st. Uh, we do require masks and have not had too much pushback from that. So we our numbers, foot traffic have been down. Um, Karen mentioned 44%. I think ours at least are at least 50% below what we were last year. We, I know that there are certain patrons that we have not seen since last March. Um, for whatever reason, if they're just staying home, staying away, finding books elsewhere, because I know they were big readers. Um, so numbers wise, you know, we, we miss our people. I think circulation wise, thankfully, we're still doing okay. We, um, our, our schools have had a little bit of trouble with some um, positive cases and then others quarantining, but our central learning centers, um, they send a staff member and, and check out quite a few books at one, t you know, at one given time. We are doing in-person story times. Um, our numbers are quite, are low for that, but I think it's more cyclical with how many preschoolers we have. It also depends on whether they're school in session or not. Um, again, we're asking people to wear masks. So 
and, and social distancing as best as, as we possibly can. Oh, let's see. Um, we, since we are not able to go into the schools, we are doing a fifth grade and a sixth grade book circle in which we're reading the Golden Silver nominees. And we've limited that. Normally we would have about, oh, 12 kids um, per group. And we've just kind of cut that down to half. And they do come once a month. We space the chairs out and we ask that they wear masks. So that's, that's going okay. Um, if school would happen to close down, of course, we would suspend that and possibly do a Zoom uh, or some sort of other virtual type of book discussion. We have a couple of other book discussion groups that are meeting um, in person here at the library. One of them um, also does a Zoom option, um, mainly because we have one of our members is a Kearney uh, almost said Carney State College, um, UNK student. So she she joins us from Kearney. Um, and I would say she was probably, she was the only one who joined us via Zoom. Otherwise, a um, couple of people just don't come, but are still reading the books. But otherwise, we just did social distance and have had a really good book discussion. Um, let's see, in October, we offered a relaxation slash meditation class with Britt Foster via Zoom. And I was really pleased. I think we had 12 or 14 people participate and it was just rather than yoga, of course, um, just some meditation type of uh, exercises that Britt led us through. And we'll be doing that again this coming Wednesday at 7.30 via Zoom. If you're interested, email me. I'll send you the link, Zoom link. She does a great job. She's a certified yoga instructor. Let's see what else is going on. Right now we have our Friends of the Library silent auction going on. Uh, the Friends of the Library sends out letters to area businesses. Many of them have chosen simply to send us cash donations, which is always welcome. Um, so our physical items that we have in the library are a lot fewer than we have had in years past, which isn't so terrible, I don't think, because our foot traffic is down anyway. Um, we don't want tons of people in it at any given time. So other than that, um, of course we had to suspend or not do our big fall festival that we usually have in October. Um, we won't be doing, of course, our Santa Claus. Um, some of the things that have been going around, going on in the community, I, I've, been a little surprised that things are still going on the way they are. Uh, I don't know that people are taking this nearly as, as seriously as they should. I was on a committee for a, an event that was supposed to be held, um, I think, well, this Saturday actually, and it took the rollback of the DHM or the increased in, in restrictions for them to finally say, we're gonna cancel. And this was an eating and drinking event. People um, packed in a, in a confined space, not going to be able to social distance, but it took the DHM for them to finally say that they were gonna cancel. And that was just a couple of weeks ago. So other than that, I think that about sums it up. Like I said, we just have had fewer numbers foot traffic wise, but are trying the best we can to offer as much as we can to everyone, so. I know our overdrive Libby circulation has been way, way up, which has been wonderful. I could be one of those that was maybe adding to your one, Libby. I'll go ahead and go quick. It's student announcements in the background. Um, you know, it is crazy, but I don't want to paint doom and gloom. Like we're still trying to make things as normal as possible for kids because, you know, life has to go on. And so, you know, we mask up and I swear I like sleep with sanitizer. So between that and washing my hands, I have cracks everywhere. Um, I do have some of my manufacturing makerspace stuff open and I just have sanitizer everywhere and the kids they just know they have to mask up if they're close they have to sanitize and they're you know i don't really get much pushback because kids just get it if you want to have it you have to do this 
Um, I, you know, our school librarians group met, uh, what was it, like in October? And then the, the bigger your city, the more restrictions you have in place. Like, my kids can come in and at least browse for a book. We just ask them, you know, if you touch a book, you leave it, and then we sanitize and all that. But um, I haven't even checked my circulation numbers. So it's, I, it's a school library. I'm sure they're about the same as in the past because kids are still having to read. Some of them are still once or two weeks. So that's always good. Um, unlike Laurel, we are still open. We're playing football, so we'll be open until football done. So um, I don't actually foresee that we'll close because unless there's a sub shortage, I, you know, this is the best place for kids to be because they'll learn, they'll get their stuff done. It is a pain in the dream to have kids go on and Zoom with them all the time because you forget that kid's on Zoom or and they might have a question or something like that. But I would say at least 50% of our kids are pretty good about that. And we only have like one confirmed case and just a couple maybe that are kids that have had it. So we've been very lucky in the school system, like at least for us. So, and I, you know, we keep track of those things pretty diligently. So we've been, we've been very fortunate, you know, those that are out with quarantine, we take care of their business. Okay, I can go. Um, it might be a little loud because we're kind of turning into a hallway right now. But um, like I said, we're we just got the announcement a little bit earlier. The high schools going remote starting on Monday for two weeks, just to kind of knock down our numbers because we'll be over fifty percent of kids gone. Um, so as far as school goes, that's where we're at. A public library, you know, we our numbers are down like everybody's, and then they were starting to come back up to normal. And then everything kind of hit again. And so now our numbers have dropped pretty drastically again. So um, we were on, you know, everything was looking really good up until the end of this month. So um, at the end of last month, I guess. So, you know, it was, it was looking good up until then. But, you know, we're, we're <laughs> 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 Um, so, um, yeah, we're just kind of hanging in there. Um, we're trying to do, you know, our programming is pretty much non-existent, like a lot of places, um, but we didn't have a lot to start with just, um, because we did close, you know, back in March and then we reopened in June. Um, and with being tied with the school, we're kind of bound to their restrictions. So, um, we didn't you know when the governor kind of lifted restrictions we didn't lift anything for the public library we just kept everything pretty much the same um so we don't have to do too much extra um we just really closed down some of our seating areas so that people can congregate and things like that so that's kind of where we're at and hopefully you know after after the high school gets done with their two weeks out um we can kind of get back to normal, but I don't foresee that happening. That's just kind of wishful thinking, I guess. I'm gonna share this as far as schools go. My granddaughter in Chinoa, they have, when they started back in August, they said they were going to have a COVID leave. When they go home for Thanksgiving, they won't go back to school until February 1st. So they get two months off. I mean, that's school wide. So I thought that was pretty proactive thinking. And then they don't have to heat the school as much in those cold months and consolidated schools. They don't have the buses going to these different towns or 14 year olds traveling on the icy roads. So it's not necessarily a bad thing. What did uh, I miss the first part? They come back February 1st. What, when do they leave? Thanksgiving. Okay. Tammy, what does that look like then for how long the school year goes? They had it planned ahead of time. They started a little bit early. They went are going just a little bit later, uh, but they are not doing in services. They didn't have any, you know, parent teachers. They didn't, I think they did them virtually. They didn't close the school. So they're just trying to use the time more effectively maybe. 
I'm not sure what numbers they pulled to make it all work to meet the state standards, but they they did. Yeah, I like they sounds like you said, um, acting proactively and I think what what Karen said, you know, I think we're in for a, a bad winter. Um, it's going to get scarier before it gets any better. All right. Anybody else have any last comments? Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much again. I'm so sorry for being about 10 minutes late. Thanks, Karen, for calling me because totally went over my head. Um, so if that is it, just need to have somebody make a motion for adjournment. I still move with adjourn the meetings, Chris. Second. Okay, so I wasn't sure who, I think that was Megan made the yeah, motion. I started and that I didn't know if Chris said <laughs> yeah. anything. And so sorry, either, either one of us. <laughs> Everybody wants to get out of here. All right, so Megan made the motion and had a second from Dave. Um, all in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 All opposed, anyone, anyone? Okay. So our meeting is adjourned. Thanks everyone. Have a great weekend. Happy Thanksgiving and all that. And we'll catch up with you next time. Hey. Bye everybody. Take care. Bye -bye. Stay well. Stay well. Bye-bye. Yeah. Thank you.